Hey everyone, we are back here at Peak Human Studios. I'm here with Dr. Sanjeev Goyal. Hi everyone. We're going to talk about circadian rhythms. I'm really interested in this because I have no idea what that means. <laughs> yeah, so let's. I just came back from a conference on chronobiology, which means uh, chrono, which means time and biology. So it's it's basically the biological rhythms, of which circadian rhythms is one of those rhythms. And circadian means rhythm based on the daily cycle, so the 24-hour clock in our body, uh, which is universal amongst basically all living things. You have everything from bacteria mm -hmm. to humans has a daily cycle. So since evolutionary psychology and way back when, and like, you know, the, the sun rising and falling, mm -hmm. Our body naturally understands that we operate in a 24-hour cycle. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. And, you know, some animals are, let's say, nocturnal. So they operate on activity during nighttime. But, and other animals are like us are diurnal, which means we, we're activity is, is during the daytime and we sleep at night. But it's all being marked by light. So that's a very important point, that light is the major factor that regulates the 24-hour cycle. Um, and, for example, that light comes in through your retina, and it, it basically sends a message through the opt optic nerve to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is right beside the hypothalamus. And wow. those cells are basically like little clocks. And it's like the master clock in your body, uh, which is, you know, right in your brain. And it's being impacted by light. So that's why um, the type of light we're exposed to during our, during our day and night has major implications on our body rhythm. And I think okay. that's the take home message. So what so mm -hmm. you're saying that one impact to our rhythm mm -hmm. is light. How does one monitor our body rhythm? How do we know that we're in good rhythm? <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to exactly know that, but uh, but you know, they have, a lot of people are wearing these different, different wearables, for example. Okay. And, and if you're in if you're in good rhythm, then generally, you know, you know, things are w working well, like you're sleeping the right amount, your body's under less stress, your you know, heart rate is at its, its good level, your heart rate variability is high. All of these things are a sense that you're in basic harmony with, with nature and the environment. And so if you're out of rhythm, like if you're not acting in rhythm, then your body's under stress, you know, you're not sleeping well, you're, you're not feeling well, you could be depressed, your hormones are out of whack. So it's basically being out of rhythm. So okay. if we want to be healthy, we need to live as much in rhythm, of which circadian rhythms are one of the most important rhythms of our body. But there's other rhythms as well. Yeah. So do, what's the breakdown of circadian again? Is that, yeah. what, what is that? What are we monitoring, actually? Oh, a circadian just means, again, a daily rhythm. So daily rhythm. Okay. Daily rhythm. So it's like anything to do with, usually it's a sleep cycle is based on, is, you know, as a daily rhythm, but... There are other rhythms that are tied to that as well, like the eating rhythm. So, okay. you know, like, for example, you know, generally people should be eating based on, you know, in the daytime and not in the nighttime. And these things are connected. So if one is eating late at night, then the hormones to, to digest food get raised. And then that increases your blood sugar and that makes you gain weight. So it's being out of rhythm right. with when you should be eating is, is not healthy. That's why this whole idea of time-restricted feeding Mm. Or, you know, intermittent, intermittent fasting, fasting okay. is a healthy thing because our bodies are meant to eat at certain times of the day. Right. So. And so to impact circadian rhythm or to have healthy rhythm, we are looking at the times we're sleeping, mm -hmm. the quality of our sleep, yeah. when we're eating, when we're eating, when we're diet. having stimulants, okay. you know, uh, when, are, when we're exercising, for example, yeah, any, anything that should be done at a certain time of the day. Right. Uh, and that's when it's probably ideal. Like they say that, you know, mental work, like, you know, calculations and stuff should be done first thing in the morning. Yes. There's normally a lull that happens in the, in the afternoon when we get sleepy and that's, you know, after food. Uh, I've heard that. I've heard different coaches saying that the first, some of the first things that they do um, are the most mentally uh, difficult or challenging because mm -hmm. that's when you're most alert, right? Yeah. There's normally a cortisol spike that gets you up first thing in the morning. That normally gets you, I don't know if you have that happen to you, like, you know, 6.30 in the morning or 7 o'clock, right away you just, boom, yes. feel like kind of awake. That's your body sending a signal, like, it's time to get up. Right. So it doesn't matter if you went to sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning or at 10 o'clock in the evening. Oh, because your that, body's programmed for that. It's programmed for, programmed for okay. this kind of normal spike of cortisol to get you going. 
So, um, you know, we have to, we kind of want to make sure that you can't kind of fight that. That's right. kind of happening. Yeah, mm. it's kind of like when I'm, what about for people who live in certain regions? For example, how does jet lag or travel impact your rhythm? No, huge. It has huge impacts because with jet lag, you're having a different light input. Ah, that's it. You're having it. a different time of, of, the, of the day. And so that's, that's basically being out of rhythm. So they've shown that, you know, people who are chronic uh, uh, travelers or shift workers, because they're, again, living outside of the time, uh, you know, day-night day, day cycle, the regular day-night cycle, they have a lot more body stress. They're suffering from more chronic diseases, mm. increased cancer for example, wow. as well. So, you know, just be very careful that, yeah, if you're having this chronic uh, living outside of a normal rhythm, that's n not your rhythm. It's causing a lot of stress in your body. So it sounds like uh, monitoring your rhythm is quite intentional. And this is where I'm thinking that routine would be really important, I right? Like your, your morning routine, your unwind routine, going to sleep, because think, yeah. how many people are guilty of, tech? they say that technology should be not be in your bedroom or you shouldn't be looking at technology before you go to bed. Do you know anything about that? No, I think routine is really important because if you're going to go to bed, let's say at you know, 12 o'clock every night, just do that every single night so your right. body understands that's your rhythm. Right. It'll adjust to your rhythm and make it'll become part of your rhythm. But if you keep moving it around, your body can't understand what is the right rhythm for you. Right. So whatever the rhythm is, if you're used to a certain rhythm, then just do that. If you're going to eat, eat a certain way, just eat the certain way. But you can't keep moving it around all the time. It just creates a lot of havoc on the system. Wow, um, I feel like I should take this advice. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked a little bit about wearable technology. I know that this is not the core of this, but can, yeah. maybe, can you name one or two things that would be helpful in monitoring that rhythm? Well, uh, for the circadian rhythm, I'm still a, a very big believer in the aura ring, and you know, we'll probably do another talk on sure. it. Sure. It is one of the hacks of the, of the book that we have out. Um, so the aura ring does measure, it's, a, I think, the most accurate device on, on the market that measures your sleep cycle. Okay. And also, which I really like, it measures your HRV, which is your heart rate variability. Ooh. It means how <clears throat> relaxed is your heart. And, and uh, so the more flexible your heart is, the more relaxed it is, the higher HRV is. So I, like, I really like that, that device ring. a lot. Okay. And then um, we look at other rhythms in the body. We haven't talked about this, but sure. apart from the daily rhythm, there's, um, there's this monthly rhythm, which is really interesting. It happens Particularly for women, right? Yeah, like, have, obviously the, yeah. Do men have a monthly cycle too, or a monthly rhythm that's monitored? Because uh, that, I know for women, it's based on menstruation if you're talking yeah. about monthly rhythm. There what probably about men? is. We just, I don't think you're anybody's aware? figured it out okay. yet, but I wouldn't be surprised that there is. And, and it does appear, I was just you know, listening to a researcher on the, on, the, on the research they were doing that showed that people's sleep is impacted by the the lunar rhythm so uh oh lunar people stay okay. up people stay up longer later uh just four or five days and the four or five days before full moon got and it that's because the the light from the full moon actually causes you to fall asleep later it actually mm. sends a signal to your brain that you you know to stay up later and and delays the sleeping so when people say that you know the effect of a full moon there probably is an effect of the full moon and, and, it's, and it's on your sleep for sure. Wow, yeah, I know, because people actually are impacted through mood. And I think yeah. lack of sleep or change in sleep or change in rhythm likely yeah. will have an effect on your mood, exactly. whether you're cranky or maybe euphoric, I don't know. But yeah, yeah we're coming into a full moon tomorrow. That's where all the... <laughs> oh, is it right? Yeah, tomorrow's oh, a full moon. Okay. So yeah. I think there's a lot of people that blame the the tragedies or whatever. Oh, it's a full moon. People are crazy. Yeah, so. yeah. there might be something to yeah. some of that. And then there's seasonal rhythms. Okay. So um, again, many animals have these seasonal rhythms. The fact that they... Um, you know, hibernate or, or, or um, fly different, you know, fly different parts of the world, like right. birds do and all that, um, based on seasonal rhythms. And humans also have them too. I mean, there's clear evidence that, you know, birth rates, births happen at certain times of the month. July, right? Yeah, I was saying yeah. July is a peak for in Canada. And, um, and deaths happen at a certain time of the year as well, and depressions do as well. So I think we have our own uh, we have our own seasonal rhythms so it, you know it probably makes sense that there could be certain foods to be eaten at a certain time sure. of the year i'm a believer that 
That's why certain, um, like strawberries or fruits or certain things are only ripe um, at certain times of the year. Yeah, it makes sense that there's some type of seasonal rhythm to how we should be eating foods. I mean, right now we get everything all year round, but probably our body was used to in the past eating certain foods at certain times of the year. Right. You know, and so that's kind of interesting, whole new interesting area of science that people are figuring out. Awesome. Well, I think, you know, it's most, the wrap up here is be mindful that your body is like a machine. It operates like uh, on a schedule (laughs) and impacted through light, right? Like we're a machine. That's a very good way to think about it. And there's many different clocks. Yeah. So there's a brain in the the master clock, we call it, and, and it's in the brain, which is basically being impacted by light. But then there's the other clocks and other tissues. So your gastrointestinal system clock is based on food. And there may be other clocks as well and different tissues based on what stimulus they're receiving. So, you know. Right. Well, that's why I think, you know, for shift workers and why, you know, we have uh, blackout uh, shades and we have blue light. light. We have, um, what do you call it? Masks, right? I wear those those every night. Right. Because you're training your body to say, okay, it's nighttime. It's Mm -hmm. dark. So this is really interesting. So anything else that they can be mindful of to be in more control of their, their body rhythm? Yeah, I think the first step is just becoming aware of it. So, you know, probably getting a wearable or, you know, like let's the phone app to track your temperature. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so you start to understand that there is there is change and change is good, but it's a normal kind of cycle that's happening in our body. The more you're aware of it, the more you can start to take actions to kind of be in harmony with it. And I think that's that's a key to health. Awesome. And you came back from which summit again was this that you found it's, this it's, research? It, yeah, it's a it's a chronobiology conference. Um, yeah, so chronobiology. lots of great, great research and tells you about how important this field is. Awesome. Well, we will be talking more about some of the findings in his uh, research. This is the Peak Human uh, Labs YouTube channel. Yeah. So if you like it, please subscribe, share. And if you've got questions, we'd love to answer them for you. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.